Hi everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Today's webinar will be about Clips to the Pain as a Companion to Moho, presented by Dave Cockburn. Before we begin the webinar, there are some housekeeping items that we'd like to go through. This webinar will be approximately one hour long. All attendees will be muted. There will be a Q&A session in the last 15 minutes. You guys can ask questions using the question box uh, right away. And due to time constraints, not all these questions will be answered. We'll try to do our best. Also, this webinar is being recorded and the recording will be shared on social media and will be sent via email to all registrants and attendees. The panelists for this webinar are Mario Quinones, myself, Victor Paredes, and also Dave Cockburn as a presenter. Also, we'd like to invite you to share your Instagram stories if you tag us as hashtag webinar at mohoanimation at squeakybix. We'll share all of your stories. Dave is a freelancer, freelance animator, illustrator, and designer, and has been working with Moho pretty much all of his century, all of this century. Uh, over the past 20 years, he has used Moho for TV commercials, short films, infographics, interactive animations, e-cards, and looping animations for the web, as well as working on projects as Squeaky Pictures, Dave, is also co-director of Mo Show Design Limited. Dave was also a member of the cartoon saloon My Father's Dragon and Puffin Broke New Friends Moho Featured Teams. So with that, I will leave you with Dave and his presentation, Clip Studio Paint as a Companion to Moho. Thank you so much. Okay, thanks Mario. Can you hear me? Yes. Uh, okay, when ready, show my screen. You're right. Right. Hopefully you can all see that. Hello everyone. Um, well, thanks for joining me. Um, hopefully I can uh, show you some interesting tips and kind of uh, just explain a bit about my process. Um, absolutely love Moho. Uh, rigged animation is often the quickest way of getting little ideas moving. But um, I often need or nearly always need another program and that program is Clip Studio Paint. So I use it for illustration, it works in CMYK for print, also uh, RGB for video and whatever. It's got fantastic drawing tools. I never got on with Photoshop. Um, Clip Studio Paint is actually designed for people who draw, uh, which is me. So um, that's a great thing. The other thing about Clip Studio Paint is the company who makes it Celsius uh, their original project was an animation software called uh, Retas Pro, I believe. And a lot of the features from that, which is uh, used in Japan for um, anime, has actually filtered through into uh, Clip Studio Paint. So it's a fantastic frame by frame uh, animation software. But I hear you ask, so Dave, if it's that good, why don't you use it all the time? Mm. Well, the answer to that is uh, frame by frame animation. In betweens, you have to do too many drawings. Um, I love 2D animation, but um, just don't really have the time to do it. But as a companion to Moho, I can use Clip Studio's fantastic drawing tools and frame by frame animation to create assets and um, switch layers, which is like little bits of frame by frame animation that Mo can, can use in a character rig. And that's what uh, this webinar is all about, about the animation I've done and uh, how I did it. So Moho loves Clip Studio Paint. So I will sh hopefully show you the animation uh, that we'll be talking about. Uh, I know the webinar could be a bit choppy, but this animation is only 12 frames a second, so hopefully that'll be all right. So the idea of this is to use Clip Studio Paint's uh, strength as an art tool and do something just very not vector and more picture booky. So 
I will now go over to my process. So my ideas usually, nearly always, start on little bits of paper. Um, actually, see over here on the back of recycled paper. Um, it's very unthreatening. Just start doodling. And for some reason, a troll came out. Um, and then I was kind of thinking, uh, you know, don't want to do too much animation for this webinar. I'm just showing process. So the idea is a troll guarding some treasure. So next stage is to do a storyboard, kind of. Well, actually, no, because um, if you see down here, that is pretty much the storyboard. A troll picks his nose, looks at it, wipes it on his body. And really, that's all I need for this. There's no need to clean it up and do anything like that. I'm not getting any approvals or anything. Uh, the next is character design. And again, I already had the character there. One of the great things about working small on rough pieces of paper is it's often really easy to get a nice proportion. And if you try and redraw redraw the character you often don't get it or struggle with it so why not just take a photograph of that and use that as a basis so that's what i did so let's just get clip studio paints um interface back so this here is just a photograph i took on my phone uh you will notice here the little cube that means it's kind of it's it's a vector. So what that means is it just takes the original um, photograph and doesn't compress it until you're ready to do that. But you can't really do much with it apart from resize it and rotate it like that. And I want to sort of clean it up and work on it. So uh, first thing I do, right click, rasterize it. Next thing, I want to get rid of the gray and the, the stuff around it. So I will go to edit, tonal correction, Ooh, tonal correction, level correction, and just boost the whites. I'm not really interested in it being too accurate at this point. Next thing I need to do is just to cut out the bits I don't need. And select invert selected area just delete it oh missed a bit there uh, you can always just erase it i've got ridiculous stabilization on there so yeah that's better um okay one more thing to do is i am going to go again edit and this is a great feature is convert brightness to opacity. And anything that's white on there, it has just made transparent, which I'll just start a new layer, pick a random color, pick my favorite brush at the moment, the crunchy brush. And as you can see, it just puts black lines over the color. So now as I'm going to use this as a uh, for a rigged animation in Moho, I want it in a more neutral pose. So to do that, I'll just do a bit of lasso work. And again, none of this has to be all that accurate. I just need to stretch it, straighten it up a bit. Okay. Um, Again, just so it's uh, very neutral. The style itself is going to be quite rough, so that doesn't matter. So uh, once I have sort of um, leveled things out, I then go in and just erase things and just roughly sketch in the feet I want. And this, I'll just go back to here, is um, use my crunchy brush. So. This is a nice feature. Um, Clip Studio Paint allows you to draw in a transparent color, which means you have the same eraser as the brush you're using. So 
you know, you don't lose that edge when you're deleting. Other interesting thing about Clip Studio Paint, which can be very useful, which I'm not using on that, are vector layers. And the interesting thing about vector layers is they use exactly the same brushes. So, uh, you can select these and move them around. And it also has some, um, some vector tools here. So I can move them around without losing resolution. So especially for line uh, artwork and animation, it's pretty handy to be able to blow things out up while still keeping uh, the line quality. Clip Studio Paint doesn't have vector fills, but if your line's a vector and your fill isn't, you don't get any soft edges. So it's pretty smart. So let's just delete that out. So next thing to do is just sketch in a background. As you can see, I'm not a big fan of cleaning stuff up at this point. Again, I wanted the whole thing to be very rough and picture booky. So this is my character design and my background layout. So next thing to do are color roughs or color models. So I basically put the troll and the background in its own uh, folder, reduce the size. The rough has been set to multiply uh, at 33% just so I can see through it. And what I do is I roughly split up the various different colored parts of the troll. And here is another brush I really like. It's the lasso fill. Um, not terribly precise, but does a brilliant job for this. So I will just go through and very quickly, oh, don't want that. I want more of a pink troll. I will very roughly just knock in the troll's skin and um, and also the um, um, transparent colour works with that too. Now imagine, if you would, that I don't want anything that fluorescent pink. There's a couple of ways I can um, adjust this color at this point. Uh, the first one is if I select the layer, I can lock its transparency. That's right. Pick a more sensible color. And again, using the lasso fill tool, I'll just do that. And that's quite quick. The other way, which I find really useful, is Let's see, let's go to edit, tonal correction, hue, saturation, and luminosity. And here you can just tweak the colors to your heart content, heart's content quite quickly. So, and then of course, combined with the locked transparency, you could go through and put spots on him. Or another way of doing that is creating another layer on top, selecting the thumbnail of that layer, say clip, clip to layer below, and then you can do the transparency again. You can use keyboard shortcut for this, and you can, you have these separated, so it's easy to change the color. So I'm just going to get rid of that and turn that off. So I go through just very roughly because really at this point, all I'm look, looking for is the color, is to get a color that I'm kind of happy with. Um, and also do the background. Um, and the other thing is, I think this needs a shadow. So again, using the clip to the layer below, I can just, this is set to multiply and 37. 
take a nice big brush, black, uh, crunchy brush, and just very roughly do that. And then clip to the layer below. So then we get, you know, a nice idea about the shadow. Okay, so that's my first pass on the color. I then just duplicate the whole folder and we'll go through the different layers, tweaking the colors, however, um, adding a bit of texture to the background. Um, I decided to go with pretty much troll number two. So part of the process now is I need to, or I want to export this as a bitmap just on its own to use as uh, a color model to pick colors from. So to do that, I press control on the folder icon, which selects it. And then I will simply just go to crop and then export that as a bitmap uh, for later use. Deselect. Okay, so now we have the character rough, we have the color models, we're kind of ready to head into animation. So how do we get into animation in Clip Studio Paint? Okay, easiest way is to go File, New, New Animation. This allows you to set up uh, an animation interface uh, document or rather turn on all the animation bits in Clip Studio Paint, but also giving you a little bit of extra around your um, animation area, which is really handy if you have things coming in out of frame. Um, so that's one way of doing it. The other way to do it, that's, that's how this one was. I'll just turn on the timeline, which you, if you can't find it, it's in window timeline. Uh, the other way of doing it is to file new, have a new illustration. You get no gap or anything like that, but then if you've got your timeline here, you can create a new timeline, okay, timeline one. You then create a new animation folder, which is there, and then you press this button and create a new animation cell. So that's done the same as, as that up apart from you don't have all the extras so animation back to the brush so let's just do daft cat character that's your first frame how do you do another one you move the timeline along and you add a new frame the frames added in the folder and you draw, but we want to be able to see what the previous frame was, so we turn on the onion skin. So then we can just do and then scroll like that. There is another tool to uh, scroll through the animation, which is Edit Timeline, which allows you to, while you're drawing, just scroll like that. Um, really needs to be uh, set up as a uh, shortcut. I have an external controller, which I'm not using for this uh, webinar, which has that built in. So um, I'm not worrying about that at the moment. Uh, so we can just scroll here. Um, the other way of, of adding a frame is to right click and you get many more options. So I'm going to add a new animation cell there. And then Let's see, let's just go back to the drawing, just make him go up a bit way. Add new animation, and let's, let's have him just come down a little bit. And then maybe I want him to after this, hit the ground. So again, right click, and I want to reuse the drawings I've used before. So I'm going to uh, basically go backward, put drawing number two in, and then back up to 
drawing number one. So we've got something like that. <laughs> the best animation in the world. So they're the basics of animation. You can also edit here. So say I wanted to move this along. Again, right click. Uh, there you go. I split clip and then I can move the clip along. This is animation duration. I can change the clip length, but you can also change the uh, duration of the um, the frames inside the animation. So there, then, oh, completely improved. And as you see at the bottom there, I run out of background, so I would have to just extend any backgrounds. So that is the basics of animation in Clip Studio Paint. So there we go. What I did, I loaded in uh, the rough, resized it. Uh, another interesting or really handy thing that um, Clip Studio Paint can do is to tint uh, the drawings. So your whole drawing is tinted with blue, which I find really helpful. Uh, in this case, I put uh, a layer above just blocking out the stuff I'm going to animate. So I'll just bring this up. Make sure head and the hand, ooh, head and hand is turned on. So using the techniques I did before in a very messy way, I just animate where I think I want the hand to be or the head to turn. The head turn is really just a um, it's just a guide uh, for manipulating the bitmaps in Moho, so I'm not too worried about that. And in Moho, the arms are going to be attached to a skeleton, uh, which will actually move them round. I just want to know the shape. So the next thing to do here uh, let's use this one as an example, is to put these arms in a neutral position. So that is easily done. Selecting them, use that. And this little cross here is your pivot point. And the other thing is to make sure, no, you're on the correct layer, which I was not. And then you just move, move them into place. Uh, so uh, this here is, you would get something like that. So this is pretty much all ready for me to do the final painting. So let's pop over to the paint files. Um, I can use all the tools in Clip Studio Paint for, uh, for painting and animation. Um, just now, uh, this is being a bit kind of laggy. Um, so I've got uh, the roughs uh, just set to a transparency. Actually, I should really set this to multiply, not that it makes much difference. And you will notice in the animation folder, I haven't got individual drawings, I've got folders. And I've got folders because, uh, as before in the color model, I have a color level and I have a shadow level. So I set up a folder with these in uh, to color, as you can see here. So uh, a really neat thing uh, about this is now if I add a am I on the right one right if I add a get to a blank frame a new frame it will give me a folder with my uh, layers as in the other frames but with no content in them 
so really handy so now I can start coloring but as before I saved out the color model so if I get the right one good sub view here see if I just expand this a bit I can open up my troll color model and also if this button is pressed whatever I click on here it picks the color so just to make it a bit easier just pan around and do that so uh, on my hand I can choose my brush uh, there is a stabilization feature so if you want really smooth lines you can turn that right up and it will smooth things out for you actually that's there you go and then you can fill it with a paint bucket uh, another interesting thing is if you have lines on one layer and you want to fill on another layer you can um, you can do that again that's quite handy so I will just quickly just put in the fingernails like that, and the hair and then I can just simply because the shadows are all set up I can pick a big brush and actually just go through and do that again if I go too far or I want it softer I can use the transparent color to just soften it out so basically I go through everything and do that in the various layers now before I export this can't really export them in time like this I need them to be one big Photoshop file with everything in its own layer so to do that I will pick the the animation frames or folders right click uh, create folder and put the layers in it and I'll just call that hand and switch because it will become a switch layer and then I'll just drag it out of the animation layer so going to the PSD export we don't need a <clears throat> timeline anymore so in this I have just tidied everything up <clears throat> and where I uh, want shadows I've put them in their own folder so I have the thing the object that's going to have the shadow I have the shadow but they need to be in a folder for when it's imported into Moho uh, I've also got a joint guide here uh, this I went through and this is at the end of one arm and the beginning of the other so if it overlaps like that you won't get any gaps but having the circle there gives you an idea that somewhere in the middle is where your bones are going to need to be to, to form properly and of course I have uh, the surprise looking head uh, which is just going to be a reference so with that done I think that's it for clip studio paint so I need to stampede over to Moho now to import uh, the Photoshop file I can either start this have a uh, new folder at the correct size and frame rate and import it or easier still just open it as a PSD and you need to inv um, import the layers individually and there you go it's uh, named them all uh, the one thing it doesn't have hasn't done is um, clipped the shadows but uh, we'll go through and sort that 
So first of all, <clears throat> the main folder is going to be uh, the skeleton of the troll. So I'm going to just uh, convert that to a bone layer so I can add bones to it later. And the hand switch is in fact going to be a switch layer. So I'll select that. And if you can see, this is window switch selection. It only displays one of those drawings at a time. And as you can see, we have the problem uh, with the shadows, but that is easily sorted because as you can see, it's kept the layer ordering. So I will just select the top one and uh, mask inside the bottom layer. So I'm basically, oh, wrong one. Mask inside the bottom there. Uh, and I'll go through and do that. Uh, and that's what it will look like when that's done. Uh, don't need that now. So we're now ready for rigging. And as we um, turn the master folder into a bone layer, I can add bones. So you would add bones pretty much where you would think they would be by selecting a bone, the next bone you draw is the child of that bone. Now, uh, for this bitmap, I was very casual about rigging for most of the, uh, the body because that's all it needed. But you will see a problem here. If I move this, it's like some sort of strange nightmare troll, which is not terribly helpful and uh, not at all what I want. But there is there is an easier way around that. So if I go to this file, uh, I'll demonstrate with this. So I'll just select this bone. I'll add another one to this twig, assuming we wanted to animate the twig. I will then select all the bones that I want to affect just uh, this drawing and this is that one. I'll then go to bone. Oh, need to... oh no, I need to go to club arm club. That's better. And use bones for flexi binding. And then hop back to the bone thing and I get slightly flexible um, bone deformation but it's not affecting uh, any other part of the body so you do that for every uh, body part just so the uh, the bones that are affecting the arms only affect the arms uh, you can also then go in and just tweak uh, the bone influence should you need to so that for example if you wanted more of an influence there we could do that so a uh, quick rundown of the troll um, yeah yeah that's the switch layer that's the interesting head and the head that bone has an independent angle, so it's not the angle isn't affected by moving the other um, the other bones in the chain. Uh, the other thing I've got I've got target bones here, so that bone is attached to that. So if we go to bone constraints, if I look at that bone, it is targeting that bone but the leg bones have squash and stretch. So let's just move down a bit here. And if I move this, you can see, wee, wee, wee. Um, I think that's about it for uh, the basic bone rigging. 
Now, in my alleged storyboard, I had a head turn, and even though we've got the head uh, split up into, you know, bits and pieces, all the elements, it's very limited as to how you can manipulate it. But there is certainly a way around that. And that leads me to the simple mesh example. This is an imported bitmap before, done exactly what I've done before, but I will se select, excuse me, <coughs> uh, the features layer, and I will go over, this is the draw menu and create a smart warp layer. Now this mesh here on any frame other than zero, I always get caught out by that, um, is manipulating the bitmap underneath it. So I can just take, let's, let's have a bigger magnet. And so you get quite a bit of um, uh, control. Now let's just delete that. Unfortunately, it's, it's almost like on this one, you maybe don't need quite so much control uh, in an auto automated manner. So just select them all, delete them, you know, frame zero, delete them. And you can simply just with the normal drawing tools, go in and do some very simple um, meshes, which are kind of more appropriate to maybe the kind of things you're, you're wanting to do, uh, certainly more controllable. Um, so, as you can see, oh, as you can see, I broke that one. Let's just delete, tab, delete, and do another one. Okay. There you go. You don't, um, if you have closed uh, shapes inside a, uh, a bigger mesh, it forms a hole. So I think that's what was happening there. So, uh, okay, we've got some mesh action. We can control our bitmaps um, in, a, in a more fine way. Uh, to do the head turn, we'll go up to the bone layer and frame zero. I'm going to quickly add a bone. I'm going to turn off its influence because it's not there to uh, move anything. It's just there as a handle. So I'm going to call that turn. Okay, then with the bone selected, I'll go to bone and create smart bone dial. And I don't need a two-sided thing. So I'm just going to do zero. So now we're in a smart action, which takes any animation outside of the main timeline. So as I want the head to turn, I shall go to the features. And at that point, I'm just going to select everything and very quickly move it. You can use all the point manipulation tools that Mo has. Oh, fantastic. And then we'll hop back to the main line outside of that action, go to the bone layer, and anywhere now on uh, the timeline, I can turn the face. So that's the principle. Let's go and have a look at that in the head. So there's a bit more of a uh, in-depth nose. Same thing I've done before. Uh, all the different uh, elements here have their own meshes. Turns the head. So imagine, if you would, that I get that I turned the head and I want this troll to pick his nose and I want the nose to react. So you would think that, and I'm just going to sidetrack here a minute. I have 
uh, color coded uh, the layers here so you can just select select the color and in the uh, filters can panel I've got lay color is any color but I think uh, the ones I want are red so there you go that's just simplified things a bit so um, I need the nose warp tool he's got here and let's see I'll just oh this may be a bit big and I want to manipulate the nose so oh oh uh, oh oh uh, come back no uh, I want not ideal unless you're actually animating a running nose <laughs> um, okay there is a way around this so let's delete that let's go into the head turn on the warp and I will just get rid of any keys on that and go to the main line. So what I've actually done is I've done another mesh, which is much bigger than the nose and the original mesh. And I have just manipulated that to give a perspective feel to the nose. So then what I need to do is go into the nose vectors, smart warp, more, smart warp layer, and I have called it nose turn. So I will apply that. Now, when it turns, it turns in perspective. And as long as I don't take it outside this big, uh, bigger warp layer, I can, excuse me, I can, animate the uh, the nose without problems so that's pretty much it for the head turn so this is what I get at the end interesting thing to know is you can't test the head turn on frame zero because it's using meshes and meshes don't work on frame zero so if I just scoot to the end here somewhere I can just demonstrate a bit on uh, so I've got a head turn, I've got a blink, which is just an action with two frames, closed and open. Got the brow. This is uh, mesh manipulation. This is the same technique I, I just showed with the nose. Uh, mouth just gets a bit smaller. Bit of head squash, because who doesn't like head, who doesn't not like head squash? And uh, this is an action with each frame is a different frame of the switch layer, which just makes it much easier to animate. When you're animating with bones, the arm swap bone is all on one layer, so I don't have to mine down into different levels uh, to find it. So, just go back to the beginning. Just, you should get an idea. And who wouldn't want to troll like that guarding their treasure? And, uh, okay, Mario, how am I doing? You're doing great. <laughs> Is that, hold on, 1944. Is that the 45 minutes up? Uh, yes, but if you want to add uh, the other example that you have, ah, yeah. we can yeah, definitely yeah. show it. Okay. Okay, so, hey, that wasn't so bad. Um, just minimize this for a minute. And uh, this is a more complicated um, piece of animation using all the same techniques. Oh, it would help if I loaded the Moho file. Uh, fly work one. As you can see, a little bit more complicated. Um, 
one of the things I did on this one is motion blur, uh, which is great fun to do. Uh, in Clip Studio Paint, you just take your drawing, you blur it, you stretch it or whatever. But on this one here, if I can actually find, <laughs> as I said, it's a little, there you are, the smear. I find that I I have actually rigged it so um, just put a mesh on it so I can bend it up and down and I can stretch it and move it and I'm not sure what that one does I can't remember I think that's the um, smart rig thing But as I said, a bit more complicated. I have strange eyes. <laughs> and let's manipulate that. That's about more target bones. And actually, there's a lot of bones hidden here. Well, there should be. Uh, these um, secondary legs, uh, you can just see them there, are actually, um, they're controlled by physics. Uh, yeah, not sure what else I can say about that. It, <laughs> yeah, there's a lot more uh, complicated stuff in there, but um, uh, this is all, everything in this, this animation are bitmaps that are animated with meshes or bones uh, using all the similar techniques I showed previously. Um, and I think that's probably about it. I think I'm, I'm, I'm ready for questions if anybody has any. Yes, we have some questions. Thank you so much, Dave, for this amazing presentation. Right, you're very welcome. And also thank all of you who are joining us live. We ask uh, from which part of the world you are watching us live. So thank you, Pavel from Poland, Nick from New Zealand, Francisca from Germany, Maya from France, Sarah David uh, from Ethiopia, Seiko from Japan, Pierre uh, from France, Marco from Mexico, etc. Brian from Costa Mesa, California. Thank you all of you. And so yeah, let's go with some questions. Um, the first one is, um, can you apply blending modes uh, to the layers? Uh, I, I believe you can. Well done. Let's, let's go troll final. Let's have a look at the head. Uh, double click at the layer. Um, um, settings and you could change the blending mode there. Uh, you uh, you wouldn't really see it unless you rendered it, though. I don't think. Yeah. So yes, yes, you can do that. That was an easy question. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, another one. question. Uh, <laughs> this one is from Rodney. What version of Clip Studio Paint are you using? And I'm going to add if there's any limitation, whether if you are using Clip Studio Paint X or Pro to export. Um, I'm using version two, the latest one. Um, I think I have EX. Yeah, I have EX. Not sure what the limitations are. I think for animation, unless you have EX, it's only got a 24 frame or one second export in the timeline. But Honestly, when you're using it for reference drawings, you know, uh, for example, if you're doing turnarounds or something, but you're animating in uh, Moho, that should be should be more than fine. Um, I think all versions uh, can export PSD. In fact, you can even just work, uh, open a PSD file and work in it. 
some of the like um, the layer masking and stuff like that doesn't really export to uh, Photoshop. So I always kind of, even if uh, clients have given me sort of reference or, or stuff in uh, Photoshop, I'll open it up and save it as a Clip Studio paint file just to be on the safe side. But um, yeah, I mean, that's all I know. I haven't really used the um, the lower version of uh, Clip Studio Paint, but I believe it should work. Yes, um, I think in Clip Studio Paint Pro, you, there's only a limitation of 24 frames on the mm. timeline, and the Clip Studio Paint X, the one you have, doesn't have that limitation. I think that's the only difference. Mm. But exporting PSD, yes, as you said, uh, you can do it on both. Um, so let's see another question. This one is from Sarah David. Um, um, yes, uh, he says, can we do this part in Moho even if it's take time a bit? I imagine this is from instead of doing using Clips of Paint to Moho, I is there any way to do it only? Yeah, with yeah, Moho? yeah. I mean, you do, you can. Um, to an extent, I mean, it's doing messy stuff like this is is actually much easier in in, in Clip Studio Paint. But uh, file new. Um, if I've got a new vector layer, oh, I need a window. Turn on my styles. Um, you can. Hold on, if I just. Uh, there you go. Uh, you can um, you can draw with um, brushes. See, you've completely thrown me. <laughs> thrown me here. No, no, I want both. Come on. Enter. So you would, it's not very visible. So you could actually uh, build shapes uh, with a brush outline I, I have actually done that before I think that, that one is come on quite a nice one um and build it like that as as vectors i mean that's the joy of uh moho really that you can you it can now manipulate bitmaps um as well as vectors like that but yeah it's certainly doing as, as as vectors it might take longer but there are advantages in that uh you can zoom into them uh which i didn't need on uh on the troll but yeah definitely doable mm -hmm. and another question is um can you modify the troll design after it's animated um <clears throat> yes. Yes, you can because hold on, let's okay. Got... So you have your um PSD export. So say you wanted to give the troll a mustache and you know, why wouldn't you? Just gonna add a layer there. Very fetching. Uh, now, if I save this, uh, because Moho is referencing this, I think I might have to. Um, I'll just revert this file. Yeah. So, oh, 
oh, that's probably because it's not being uh, affected by a mesh. But um, as you can see, to an extent, you can um, you can update the uh, PSD file, and it will update in Moho. Uh, but once you've got sort of meshes and things like that, it would have to be in exactly the same place, or if it is a different layer. Um, as I had, it would, um, I think it does uh, load them in, but uh, it's not rigged. So mm. you would have to do a bit of tweaking. So, awesome. yeah. And uh, Dave, uh, another question is, uh, can you animate without using bones? Uh, yeah, you can do frame by frame. Uh, you can also, uh, you can do point animation as well. So let's have a look at the the nose when he's when he's picking his nose like that. That is simply some point animation. So you can uh, animate uh, individual points. And there are frame by frame layers uh, which you can. Um, they're quite basic, but you can, in fact, um, create a entire um, uh, Where are we? Oh, here we go. Add a new layer, and you can add a frame by frame layer. So you, uh, you know, I guess technically you can. Actually, if I go to the proper layer, so. I can do something similar. So, yeah, you can. It's maybe not as efficient as in uh, Clip Studio Paint, but um, yeah, most things are doable in Moho. Again, it's just down to you know what you're comfortable with and how well it works. Mm -hmm. Here's another question uh, from Rodney. How did you blur the wings on the fly? Uh, fly work. Um, they're bitmaps. So um, I drew them like that. <laughs> it's, it's the simple uh, answer, answer to that one. Um, oh. Sorry, I've just got a cat on my keyboard currently. Um, yeah, so um, everything in the fly are, are bitmaps, so you can you can blur and have transparency and and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. And that's actually a good uh, reach to Alan question. Uh, do you do you do all of your animation with bitmaps, or do you use vector drawing sometimes? Oh, uh, uh, both. Both sometimes, um, I mean, you can even mix them as well. So you could have a uh, vector animation of a character, and if you needed some motion blur, you would just render out one flame, frame of that, take it into uh, a bitmap editor, blur it, change it, or whatever, load it back in, and put it in as a switch layer. So uh, you, you can do both either, and I have. Mm -hmm. And one last uh, question. Let's see. Um, can I use the same mesh in one, in more than one layer? Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Um, let's just go to the troll file. So um, let's get rid of this style window. So maybe you can see a bit better. So basically, any um, bitmap layer and meshes work with vectors as well. If you go to the image or vectors in vectors, you just select which uh, warp or mesh is affecting it. So I set up browse to have their own browse, but if I wanted to, to use the mouth turn, I could 
I could select that. So you could have you can have uh, one mesh um, affecting lots of uh, different layers, or one mesh affecting lots of different meshes. Mm -hmm. Well, um, thank you so much, Dave. Unfortunately, our time is limited, but let's go with just the last question. <laughs> okay. um, what would you say to anyone who wants to try this type of uh, animation using Clip Studio or Photoshop and mix it up with uh, Moho? Uh, how to prepare uh, the file? What would you say to to anyone who wants to try this it's, kind of animation it's it's actually surprisingly easy and and i guess it's one of one of the joys of this kind of animation that if you're an illustrator and you you have an illustration that you want uh or a character and you can split them up into different folders or whatever um in whatever if um you can load it up into um moho as I've done in this, um, manipulate them with bones, or um, or or even add meshes. So I think it's kind of, especially for shorter animations. Uh, as I said, if somebody has some of their own drawings or photographs or things like that, it's a it's a great way of doing it. Well, thank you so much, Dave, for those wise words. <laughs> and for this amazing webinar. Oh, you're welcome. It was a pleasure. And I hope uh, people got something interesting from it. Well, definitely. We had some nice messages, so thank you all of you. Uh, one last bit of information before we go. The future is 2D. Moho is a powerful 2D animation software that combines the most powerful animation technology with state-of-the-art professional animation tools draw, read, and animate easily. You can create your characters directly in Moho with its vector tools, optimized for animation, or import images or Photoshop files, keeping the link and layered structure. For more information, visit mohoanimation.com. Also, as a reminder, this webinar has been recorded and will be uploaded to our YouTube channel. So, don't be alarmed, you can watch it again. Uh, just uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel, Moho Animation, to get a notification once the webinar is uploaded uh, and for future videos as well. So also, for to learn more about Moho, you can visit our website, but also follow our social media as Moho Animation. And last but not least, for more information and to follow Dave's work, Follow him on his socials as uh, Squeaky Pigs on Instagram, Squeaky Pigs on Twitter, and his website, squeakypigs.co.uk. So with that, thank you again so much, Dave. You're welcome. It was fun. Thank all of you who joined us live. Uh, please stay tuned in our socials for more presentations like this one. So see you next time. Bye-bye.